Welcome to another episode of RevXP Presents. I'm Chris Mann, the SVP of RevXP, the global gaming division of Revolution. And today I am joined by my friend and pro FIFA player, content creator, presenter, Mike LaBelle. What's up, Mike? Hey, how's it going? Always a pleasure. I like that we got something locked in here. We're all sharing uh, a little bit of that Zoom action. I love it, man. Well, it's good to catch up with you. I was obviously seen you in a few years uh, with everything that's been going on. I know you've been busy. We've worked together a few times. So for those of you out there that don't know Mike, Mike is actually, again, a pro FIFA player. He's a multinational champion. He's a content creator and a presenter within the FIFA space, and he's worked with the Red Bull and the New York Red Bulls for the last six years. He's got a deal with JLab. He's worked with uh, EA extensively around the FIFA franchise, and we've worked with Mike on Chipotle, and he's worked with you know other brands you know as well over the time. So uh, Mike is very very seasoned with working with brands, very accomplished creator within the space, as along with a pro player. And I'm excited to have him because. The news and the timing of having you on is pretty impeccable. We didn't, I didn't know this at least, but uh, big news broke yesterday. We all knew it was coming that uh, EA is rebranding the FIFA franchise. And I will throw it to Mike to talk about that because you're the professional and you know you got more insight than I do. Yeah, if anything, they kind of gave you a little bit of a teaser, right? That more information is coming in July. That was kind of the big announcement. You got uh, a look at the logo. And then, of course, everything was. I guess confirm with a separation. Not that we didn't know that going into it. I think the major takeaway, at least at this point, is people have been asking me, they've probably been asking you and, and so forth and so on, is around, what does this mean? Are we still gonna have the players? Are we still gonna have the teams? I think that's the first question that people have, and that doesn't shift at all. Um, it's a misconception that the licensing with FIFA dealt with the players of the teams or the leagues uh, where you had to be licensed by FIFA to get those. EA was always, uh, from my understanding, paying for them or worked out relationships with the teams and the, the players on more of an individual level. Uh, what you would see change would be, of course, the, the name of the game is going to change. And I, I think or I'm going to assume with the FIFA World Cup that we might have some shifts with international stuff. I don't know any inside information, but that would be my assumption. Obviously, name change, and maybe with some of the international teams, you're going to see a shift. But in terms of actually having the players, Ronaldo's still going to be Ronaldo. Messi's still going to be Messi. Uh, Juventus is still going to be Juventus. Manchester United is still going to be Manchester United. You get the idea of where I'm going. Well, I want to know if uh, AFC Richmond's still going to be in it and my guy Ted Lasso, <laughs> because uh, that was a, an amazing co-marketing promotion that they did this year. But uh, we'll let that see. You know, we'll see what happens, what EA has in store for us. But I think you bring up a good point, right? Like, from the brand perspective, nothing really is changing outside of them going from FIFA to you know EAFC, which actually helps brands, I think, under uh, potentially with activations around the FIFA ecosystem. Ecosystem, you know, having worked really closely with EA over the last few years and explored opportunities with majority majority of their games, uh, including FIFA, um, their relationship with FIFA actually put a lot of handcuffs on potential brands coming in. And working with FIFA creators, working with the game because of kind of like that, uh, the FIFA oversight and, and really only wanting to work with brands that are associated maybe with FIFA on a national and international level. So uh, this is a really good sign for brands, really good opportunity to continue to explore opportunities around one of the you know biggest franchises globally uh, now opening up and having a lot more flexibility to work with brands, you know, both on the global and, uh, you know, domestic level. Yeah, I expect a, a lot of unique activations uh, when it comes into this, this separation. It's kind of like as you add more parties, and you know this firsthand, especially working on the back end side, everything gets more complicated. It's, it's that simple. Every time you add a new person, yet alone a new team or a new organization, and these mega organizations, we're talking about EA, you're talking about FIFA, these guys are huge. So they're going to have so many different eyes that look over every single brand that comes into some uh, some sort of pitch or or anything that could be brought in front of the table and that's just going to be so many conversations i think it also probably takes a lot of time to get things pushed through i would assume i don't know your world in in, in that side in terms of trying to work out different inclusions with ea or with fifa or them together as a group but i could just assume that there is a lot of back and forth some gatekeeping tons of legalities and obviously if you have less parties involved things should move a little bit quicker you would also assume that there are is, is more room for creativity. Absolutely, more room for creativity, less hands in the pot, less cooks in the kitchen, right? Uh, as they say, and uh, to that point, I think that we're excited to continue to explore opportunities around FIFA and and where it goes in the future. Now, EA FC. So, Mike, as one of the top creators within the EA FC ecosystem, how should brands think about activating with you and other creators? Well, I've always felt this way and nothing's changed for me. I have seen a little bit of a shift in the last few years, maybe from a creative end, 
but I think you should always look for authentic relationships. And this is always a big error. A lot of times you've been creating content, you can't wait to get some sort of inclusion, partnership, sponsorship, something that supports you because you're putting in all this time, you're grinding. And a lot of times the first deal, the second deal, the third deal that you get offered maybe isn't the right fit. You don't like the product. It's maybe not valuing you properly. You're not building towards something bigger. You don't have measurables. You don't have working relationships. Um, so that's one of my big things that I've always stressed is to make sure that you're trying to align with brands that you also are, are actively using. Think about it. I've been working with Red Bull a long time, but I've been rink, drinking Red Bull well before then. Uh, and it, I think that's really important. It would be really weird if you had, for example, an alcohol sponsor, but you didn't drink alcohol. That does not make sense for either party. Uh, so that's one of the big ones. And what I've noticed the last few years is, especially on the bigger creators, the, the large creators, are looking more for ongoing relationships. I don't, I don't think anybody was ever against this, but I think people were more open to taking one-offs. Right now, I see two different types of activations, maybe three different types of activations that happen often. So we have the uh, long-term partnerships, which is ongoing. Uh, you could you could bring me up with with Red Bull and that. Sometimes they 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 have they have a few of these all inclusive in the the long term deals. You had the campaigns, which you talked about. You and I had done a campaign with Chipotle. If you had a new product coming out, that's pretty common. Uh, if McDonald's has a new product coming out, they might do some sort of inclusion. I've done that with Burger King as well, where hey, this is a product we want to make something fun about this to let people know, kind of as a a cool advertisement for for people um, at home. And then the other last one being that I see very common now is IP. And when I say IP, I'm talking about, I'm building out a series and I wanna bring in maybe a headline sponsor that makes sense for that series. So for example, let's say that I was going to play people in FIFA and I'm gonna drive around uh, New York City. Maybe I need a car sponsorship. So then maybe I could bring Audi in or Mercedes in or somebody in for that sponsorship, eight, you know, eight episodes, eight series, whatever that, or eight, eight, eight different activations or creations on the long form and turn them into short form, whatever it might be. But that's a natural way to include that specific sponsor. So you don't necessarily have a, a year deal or a two year deal or a six month deal, it could turn into more, but you also don't have a campaign deal. You're specifically using them for that IP that you're creating and that you own. Yeah, I think the last one's really interesting that you bring up because you're seeing a lot more of that on the creator front. You know, you've got Cutie Cinderella with the streamer awards, massive scale. You know, I think the one that you, like specifically you driving around in the car challenging people to, uh, to play EAFC and ha looking for a potential auto partner on that, it's really interesting and here's why. The likely the, the auto partners benefit is that they get access to your community of FIFA players and fans without having to actually invest within the FIFA game franchise, right? And I think that is something like creators are a way in for brands to access IP without necessarily maybe having to pay for that IP, but you have to be creative about it. And you also have, there's obviously a lot of rules and that's where people like my, me come in and we work creatively with you to create campaigns. But I think that's a really interesting, like, you know, series that, you know, bringing to life in the benefit. And of course the benefit for you having a, uh, of an auto brand or any partner is obviously the revenue that you get in, but also the ability to then create that content. That's the value the partner is bringing. The value to your community is the partner is actually allowing you as a creator to create this really great content. I think that's things that, you know, being authentic is one thing, but we always try to stress on here, if you've watched this, you know, watch this content that we've been putting out for the last two years, is the key to success for brands in gaming is to add value, to be additive to the community. Whatever community you're gonna be in, your community is very much different than the League of Legends community. So how do we help you as a brand when we come to you to add value to your community? And it would be maybe to help you put on this kind of content series or, you know, engage your community in really different and unique ways. Yeah, it, it's also natural, like I was saying with authenticity, and I will say with the IP, it's often going to be something where you might have the rough edges of an idea and you might have to go to a management team. You might have to work with somebody to kind of build this out because you're gonna be selling that now as a package saying, hey, this creator wants to create this, are you interested? It's gonna be in this location, these are the ways that we're gonna include your your branding or your company or your product. And in something like that, like that we use as an example, be so smooth and easy, be like today, we're in New York City, we're going around New York City, how am I gonna do it? Not on the subway, not today, I've got <laughs> blank. And then you're, you're ready to go. And it, it looks really good from both ends, because yeah. it's something that, helps you make better content. Also, they get the same exposure and advert and in a way that also meshes where it's not forced. Because a lot of times people get reads and I still don't, I don't really feel like the reads work that well. And I think everyone would agree you're losing creativity there where you have to yeah. be verbatim. This is the line that you have to say and you cannot put it in your own words even. Uh, and I've seen that wow, on really? sponsorships. See? Like it's going in a better direction, but I still see those where you see a copy and paste tweet or you see, you see something go out or you could tell that it was like, 
I had to read and include certain yeah. paragraphs or a couple sentences that were really important here. It's usually more than a couple sentences. Even on YouTube videos, like if you're talking about a 30 second or a 60 second inclusion, some of those aren't gonna include a bunch of creativity. I don't think they work nearly as well, but you've got your advert space and here it is. Yeah, I would say uh, there's a couple, couple of feedback on that point. That was a much deeper conversation, but I would say this. Whenever we work with our clients um, to share social or messaging, whether it be in-stream content, wherever, we always try to give guidance to our creators because there's always like really key message that needs to be, hey, this product is coming out this time. Hey, this is what's unique about it, but put it into your own words. And I think, you know, one of the challenges that we face a lot is that Sometimes we'll send like suggested copy and they'll just copy and paste that suggested copy. And, we're, and then whenever I see that, I'm like, no, like why? Like it literally says in big, bold, red letters right above that, put into your own words. So that's great that you do that. It's really important for brands watching to know, you know, taking that extra step to make it actually meaningful to your community is important. And that's why you're a great creator, you know? And I think sometimes when a lot of bigger creators are busy, they have a lot going on, maybe not great, you know, leadership or management teams you know and in the times unfortunately they copy and paste stuff and that's not that's not ever what we're looking for it's, it's kind of funny you brought that up so i know you're tight on time but i want to tackle one quick one quick thing uh, the fifa the ea fc ecosystem is really unique in terms of content uh, i know you're really you, you stream a lot of gameplay but a lot of other creators are big with like the ultimate team packs. Can you tell, you know, for brands out there what's the difference why is the ultimate team pack thing so interesting uh and kind of, you know, your take on that and, and kind of the content that your community is looking for. I think it's sort of simple. When it comes to streaming as well, I look at maybe there's three verticals within streaming where you have, is the guy going to be or the girl going to be very entertaining, right? Uh, is that person a pro? Um, and, and then are they giving you or providing you information? And if you typically the rules, if you have two of those three, you're probably going to have a successful stream or you have a chance of like really making something from nothing, maybe in the content world. So you're either like the best of the game and you're giving all this information, you're super entertaining, um, or, or you're, you're providing um, information, and then you're like collaborating, you can mix and match of what that kind of looks like, uh, and, and so forth and so on. Uh, I, I think a lot of people love watching the pack openings because they don't want to do them themselves. That's an investment that you have to make, to right? Like I'm, I'm getting to watch something and get that that same feel or that that oh, is he gonna get something? Is he gonna? Nothing's gonna happen. I, you know, you maybe even have a little anxiety watching, but you didn't have to make that investment. You didn't have to do it yourself, and you get to see what they're gonna do with those yeah. um, with with those types of packs. Another thing too, a lot of times people will open other people's packs, like maybe the the people in your community's packs on stream or something along those lines. So now for that's like almost pulled in as it's part of your stream. We're like. Your viewers are also supplying the packs. It goes out to a larger audience. They can cut it out. Everybody gets some sort of reaction on screen. Um, and it gives you another, uh, I guess, piece of, of content that can live on. I, I think that that happens a lot in this specific community. Well, I thank you for sharing some light on that. Um, Mike, we really appreciate your time. I challenged Mike to a game of FIFA 23. Um, <laughs> and I was going to use AFC Richmond, but we couldn't get it to work. Uh, I know he's probably shaking because my Ted Lasso skills. So nervous. Um, actually, I, I'm actually <laughs> thankful that we didn't. We weren't able to play because Mike probably would embarrass me. But um, we appreciate you joining. I know you're busy. Uh, hopefully, we'll catch up soon. Uh, we'll link where people can find you. Excited to hopefully work together in the future further, uh, especially around this exciting news with EAFC. Mike, thank you so much. Good luck with everything that you do, and uh, we'll uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you. No, I, now, I appreciate you. Now, let us throw it over to Ian for some RevXP data nuggets around the FIFA and EFC ecosystem. Ian, take it away. Thanks, Chris. Happy to be back again with another batch of data nuggets within RevXP Presents. Uh, great conversation with Mike. Really interesting to hear his story and how he works in the more kind of sports of the esports landscape, which is cool to hear. Uh, as as people always wonder about how that works between gaming and esports and and the sports games within the landscape. Uh, looking at the future EAFC community and some things that make them very attractive to brands uh, and interesting for their creators to work with. Uh, the community is younger, more diverse, and more affluent than both the national average and even the average gamer. 58% uh, of the community is under that key age of 34, 42% uh, identify as non-white, and 64% kind of find themselves in that those middle or upper income bands. Mike talked about one of the keys uh, to being a good creator and having a good stream is providing your community with all of the up-to-date information, uh, and he hit it right on the head there. The future EAFC community, 78% of them 
watch gaming streams, which is a which is a really large amount. And then half of them, forty seven percent of them, get their uh, kind of all of their latest gaming information from those creators that they follow. So they're super tuned in. They're watching streams at a high rate, and they're looking to those creators to give them the information that they need to stay up to date within the gaming community. The last thing that we always like to talk about is kind of looking at how influencer friendly. Uh, different communities are and, and what level of influencer they even serve as within their own circle. Something that was really surprising to me, actually, uh, the future EAFC community kind of scored the highest out of any of the subset of gaming communities that we've looked at so far. Uh, they are 2.1 times more likely than the average gamer to trust products recommended by their favorite creators. 83% of them then turn around and love recommending things for people to try. And the last thing that Mike hit on a couple different times was that authentic connection between uh, creators and brands, which really helps the brand get into that creator's community. 72% of the future EAFC community really prefer those meaningful connections with brands, which we know creators can help brands facilitate. So really cool to hear Mike kind of tee up some of the things uh, that we had this week and uh, back to you in the studio. Thank you, Ian, for those great data nuggets. I'm sure those brands watching out there are really excited to learn that the FIFA community is really receptive and engaged with creators like Mike. Mike, thank you so much for joining us. I know your busy schedule is packed with all the content creation and events you're hosting. Uh, we appreciate your time. For those of you watching, we appreciate you tuning in. Our friends at Synopsis, thank you. Don't forget, the Esports Business Summit is back. We'll have a link to register November 1st through 3rd in Las Vegas. We'll see you out there. Until next time, have some fun, play some games, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye, everybody.